bringing you guys David Spargo, who is sixth place right now, six and two, very competitive record in that NWL field. A win here, seven and two, that minus 50 spread won't even matter. If you win enough games, your spread never does. But Jared is a formidable foe and will be looking to shake things up in this tournament. So Jared Capel, David Spargo, NWL for this game. The plan is to hop back to CSW for the next one if we can get any game at all from that field. But here we go. Uh, Jared drawing heroic. And what is the seventh? He doesn't even show it to us. He just drops, I think, what, choicer? Oh, yeah. My goodness, 86 points. All right. Welcome to is the it? game, Jared. Welcome back to stream. The Choric is also another bingo as well that's playable. But choicer doesn't take a hook, so... Um... Could catch somebody out at some point. You might think choice of choices, but I think it's choice and choicest. That's correct. It's only a comparison of an adjective. So no S on choicer. I bet J Jared knows that too, and that's why he's picked this one. But yeah, Koreak also there for him out of this rack. You don't think you're going to bingo. You have two different anagrams with CCO, but... There we go. And Spargo now on stream has to respond. He's already trailing by 86, and he's pulled uh, some interesting tiles to be sure in E-E-J-M-O-V-W. Hmm. Oh. Mojo I mean, down to the O is an option. E-E-V-W, not ideal, but it's something. Yeah, that's not what I was thinking also. I mean, again, I'll tell you right now, Matt, this is the first time I've ever commentated on any NWL game, so I'm going to have to tread lightly also, but I'm kind of just looking through words that I would just normally see myself. Um, and Mojo pretty much ranks near the top anyway, um, despite whatever dictionary I'm playing. Um, and it's, that's obviously a good word, so it might be the best option here, setting up the W, potentially. I mean, he's quite far yeah. behind already, so he needs to do something <laughs> just open something right. up right so mojo a decent option there mo i actually had my quackle set to csw and mojo was still the top option even with those <laughs> extra words so that's why austin hasn't found anything better in either lexicon it's not there uh, mojo looks promising to set up that w uh, wove on top of choicer making w e and o r i suppose another option but you just get hit back so hard after that play that i don't think you can make it yeah, the leave of J-E-M is not great either, so it's... Well, he's going with M Mew. So Mew is going to be the option here. E-J-O-V, the leave. Um, that is a bold leave for sure, one I am not a fan of at all. I can't think of almost anything that's going to help out here, but Mew is the play we've seen from David, 86 to 16. This will keep the board good and open compared to some of those other options, but he's going to need a good pull here, or he's looking at a clunky turn next turn as well. Yeah, I mean, as it turns out, um, if he played Mojo, Jared would have hit that X um, anyway, mm -hmm. so it kind of he would have had Ibex or something, so he actually ends up dodging a bullet uh, with that one. But um, Mew does take an L hook as well, so he could play something down there. And David's also just drawn into an L as well, so I'm um, wondering if Jared is looking for something down there, looking for Beald maybe? Beald, yeah, he's got Beald set up right now, holding on to the X. I think Jared's going to take some time here and see if there's a way he can cash that mule hook and hold on to and set up the X. That would be a really cool sequence of events for him. I'm not seeing a way to set it up effectively out of this turn, but it looks like he is going to hold on to it. And I mean, I think this is reasonable from that D in Beald. You're going to have Dexy or, you know, Dixit type plays pretty often. So, you know, a strong idea here from Jared. I think, though, maybe just cash in the X and play Exiled here uh, is, is another thing you want to think about. Well, you might be thinking of Bile putting the E next to the double and hopefully setting up an ex something 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 play but i feel yeah. like it might get yeah it might get might get used fairly often though exude you know you you pick up exude yeah. on a u draw that's that's something to try to set up this x a little bit better if nothing else you're guaranteed xed unless it gets blocked next turn an xed is going to be at least yeah, that's going to be 36 on its own 
but exile yeah, this turn is 37 i don't know yeah i think i'm likely to play exiled here the only thing is that um well actually i think exile looks pretty good here yeah. maybe he doesn't like keeping the b but exile just scores so much yeah 37 is a lot of points but um opted for build here instead and we'll see if this pays off for him is he going to draw a big x play from the d or elsewhere on this board spargo i think to respond with j-o-l-e and b-e yep. It's the only reasonable option on this turn for like, setting up that J and giving it away. Uh, I think you have to. Yeah, I mean, there's always a chance that um, Jared can't use the J, and then he's going to get two big scores no matter what. So, um, and he's, since he's tra training by a long way, um, you might as well. If he draws into an I or something and get Jive, get a bunch of points that way. Might as well. And uh, Jared has drawn into the D plays he was looking for. Doxy and Detox both available, but he's also drawn into the Q this turn. And that Q is going to make things very interesting. Now you can cash in your X like you've wanted to, but I've got to hold on to the Q. And I hate holding the Q. Um, <laughs> or you could think about uh, holding on to both. Just address the J spot, play Jota or Jato and hold E-I-Q-X. You'll score 33 this turn, likely going to score 30 to 40 with the X, and maybe something opens up for the, the Q. And uh, hey, if you never bingo, but you score 35 every game, every turn in NWL, you're probably going to win that game. Um, so that's not an unreasonable path to victory here as well. I'm curious to see, does he hold Q-X or what? This will be interesting. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, I personally would just take the take the points with the um, with the D here with Doxy. I think because you, you actually end up keeping QAT on your rack, so you are ready to play off the Q at some point. Um, but it looks like Jato is coming down. Maybe he's setting up um, an X spot underneath um, or in between those the Joel or the O of Joel and the A of Jato, getting some maybe something like Oxo or something if he picks some, something like that out. Um, or maybe if he draws into uh, a U and something other good, he might get some like quote or something like that. But um, yeah, I'm not a big fan of picking. Uh, uh, well, he almost gets that, but uh, keeping the Q and the X at the same time. But uh, I can definitely understand um, keeping those tiles for the next turns. Uh, that's going to give a huge play to David. David already had Zowie through the O, which was an underwhelming play, but now it's an awesome play. Z-O-W-E-E. -E. It's 45. Yeah, looks like a standout play to me. Yeah, these are tough to spot. I mean, maybe you see that word earlier, but now that this comes down, you don't think to continue looking there. We may see D E A V E for thirty from the V or from the D and in Beeld instead. I'm not sure uh, what to expect from David here, but he'll have options in either case to score very well. Yeah, another option is to play Wazoo onto the O of Joel, uh, tripling that Z. Um, I mean, it's very dangerous to put the W next to the triple word square, but um, he is holding two of those E's um, after that. So, but he actually opts to play Z and Eam for 37, keeping a vowel. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's a, it's a good move. Um, I probably would still go with um, Zowie here, getting rid of the W and getting a little more points, but it's quite possible he didn't see it. Yeah, I'd, I'd imagine that's the case. Zowie's a, a no-brainer if you do see it, but a very tough-to-spot play uh, as well. Jared now holding on to QX after last turn, and he may opt to do it again. Just AHI down from the A in Jato looks to be a reasonable play. He also has Quiche available through the C in Choicer, uh, or Quiz to that newly exposed Z. Quiche kind of closes some of those floaters, but then opens a big S hook down on this board. Uh, how do you approach a situation like this, Austin, in terms of board control and doing what you want to do to the shape of this board? Yeah, I think it really largely depends on what the, obviously the situation you're in and what the score is. So uh, Jared is currently ahead by 45 points. Um, I know it's still very early in this game, so it probably doesn't really matter too much at this stage. Um, it looks like he's just playing EX in the top right. So he's keeping some kind of clunky-ish tiles um, with uh, with H-I-I-Q-U. 
Um, but Kish kind of does really blow up the board and uh, blow a board open basically with the E next to the triple uh, letter square, maybe like an F or something or a Y or a W you can go down there, hit the double. Um, so this is a bit more kind of keeping things kind of contained, kind of kind of keeping things in check, really, really let David kind of um, make something happen, open something up and probably have to uh, sacrifice some equity in order to do so. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think that's kind of what he's trying to do with EX here, not doing anything with the board that's uh, too crazy. I think it's reasonable, you know, hold that cue. It is a great closing tile and wield it when you have a play you like. Um, I think that's kind of some of the thought here going on as David into that AOVW leave has picked up BST. A promising tiles, but AVOW rather inflexible. He still doesn't have many good options. Avows making DA maybe the best play for him here. You don't want to burn that S. And that closes quite a bit, although it exposes new quadrants of the board. I just don't know what else you do. A play like Oxbow from OX maybe holds ASTV, which can bingo for you a lot. Wove down to the E and Z for 14 points is absolutely abysmal. I just, there's <laughs> not much else that can be done. Yeah, I mean, Wove, um, yeah, so Wove from that E of Z kind of opens up that big spot for the triple so it's really not great it's going to give away a lot of points i mean avows might be might be the play here i mean no, no s's have been played yet i mean there's still three more and there's still blanks on scene you might not need to worry about just playing off the ass at this stage you probably you're likely to get one of those at some point later in the game anyway and you want to try and open up the board and putting an s out in space means you know if you have a seven letter word it's somewhat likely you're going to have a space to play it with that S on the board to pluralize it. So it might not be that bad. He doesn't really have all that many great options that might be, so Avals and DA might be the best of kind of a bad bunch of options that he has currently. Um, but since he is um, training by 76 points, he might need to kind of make something happen here. But he does play Dort, D-A-W-T-S, which keeps B-O-V, which is not great. Say the least. <laughs> yeah, I actually threw up in my mouth a little bit looking at that. <laughs> uh, I know 30 is a lot of points, but oh my goodness, that is not going to end well for David. So yeah. We'll see what he pulls, but it'll need a miracle here or he's in continued trouble next turn. Yeah, it's a recipe for disaster. Any kind of, I mean, if you pick up two bigger uh, clunky tiles, you could be in big trouble. But it looks like he's drawn into something like above. Um, wow, and then you have vowels. too many vowels, so he'll still be in a bit of trouble anyway. So that's the kind of thing that you, in a way, you don't want to do with um, playing something like dots. You want to get rid of your worst tiles, and you, you know, he kind of drew okay, I guess, with that. But it was, you know, he has bad tiles to start with. Well, I guess he drew four vowels, so it didn't really help. <laughs> uh, when you draw four vowels, you're usually not going to have a good turn. Yeah, it <laughs> doesn't end too well. No, but I guess I guess it kind of works out here. If you are going to draw four vowels, you might as well be holding a B and a V to score something with them, right? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, he has a place for above with the uh, with the A of dots, I guess. But he's going to keep A I O, which will later on if he picks up too many more vowels. Um, but yeah, we just saw Jared uh, put down quips, which uh, sheds that Q, and he's actually drawn into a bingo. It looks like hurried. So, um, yeah, exactly. And if um, David does anything to open up the board, that will be favorable for that. We'll soon see. He's playing it's Obia, like he's but Obia yeah, here. look at the leave again. The leave is not great again. And I don't know. I mean, you can play Bota, B-O-T-A, through the T and dots. You can play a number, number of other things, B-O-O, -O beneath dots. Uh, I don't know. IOV is so scary. There's only four E's left to be drawn in the game. You can't be giving yours away like this, I feel. Yeah, you definitely need that E to, to help Bingo on a subsequent turn. And uh, he's going to have to hope to pick up some kind of low point, one point uh, consonants here, which he kind of has done. But now you have two G's and you have the V and the O. It's again, you're kind of, um, you're kind of digging yourself a little bit of a hole here. You're not going to be able to get out of it and... In that time, Jared could be bingoing again, and it might be game over by that point. 
you know, this is tough. But now Jared has a tough situation with this bingo lead. Um, he has to decide. He's got a couple plays that score very well, but blow this board wide open. Word, W-H-I-R-R-E-D, is 36. Churred, C-H-U-R-R-E-D, is 34. Uh, both of those good ways to play off a lot of these tiles, but he can also just play H-U-T to the left side of Quips, making H-I and the U-P. That holds D-E-I-R-R. This isn't the best board for bingoing, but you have to assume it's getting opened by David, right? And if it's not, well, that's fine. I'm A-OK -okay with this board <laughs> never getting opened again. So exactly. I really like this decision here. Just keep it tight, yeah. make your opponent open, and then crush him when he does. Exactly, yeah. I mean, I think Jared uh, is basically just trying not to open up the board and just get his tiles ready to the point where if David decides to open things up, he's ready to hit with a bingo, and then it's basically game over. And you can see that David has really no choice with the letters that he has and now has to start opening the bottom part of the board um, with coving, which actually does seem like a decent move here. Um, he actually does need to open up the board oh. and get rid of those bad tiles and hope to go for those blanks and, and S's that are still lurking in the bag. Yeah, so coving comes down very quickly. Once again, look at this leave, GT. Like, yeah, it's two tiles. It's not the worst, but those even together have some anti-synergy. Just David has not been able to get a good balanced leave that gives him good bingo percentage at any point in this game. Although maybe, maybe. Oh, there, there he is. He's not a bingo anyway, GT. But when you pick up reins, uh, good things happen. Yeah. So he's drawn ratings and staring and all that fun stuff. And Jared looks like he's got a bingo rack, but nothing is going to fit on this board for him. And he's going to have now another tough decision. He said, we'll keep it tight. You open the board and I'll bingo on you. He kept it tight. The board got opened and he is not going to bingo. So that's tough. Yeah. I mean, um, if we're playing Colin, Joel does take a D. Uh, that, I believe that's not a word in this dictionary. That would have been nice for playing red to getting rid of those two tiles, but not an option here. So um, yeah, he's looking to get rid of the R and the D here um, for whatever points he can find. And without Jold, which is obviously not a word here, there's not really that many high scoring places to do so. Um, so it looks like that David is going to come back with a bingo on this next turn. And it really depends if Jared's going to draw into a bingo straight after that to kind of keep him behind. Yeah, definitely an interesting decision and a tough turn here for Jared. Do you just drop DR somewhere or do you do something more productive in terms of scoring points? The other thing we have to ask ourselves is, do we think David's going to put an S on Coving? Oh. And does Coving take an S? So these are a lot of questions going on right now. I'll go ahead and spoil it. Yes, Coving <laughs> does take an S and Gastrin plays there for 83. But how sure is Jared on that? How sure is David on that? I had no idea. I would have flipped a coin and just done what it, did what it said. Yeah, exactly. And um, obviously with this challenge rule, um, even if you're not slightly sure of it, if your opponent's not slightly sure of it, they might not actually challenge it. So it could be worth just trying it anyway if he's not sure. But um, but there are multiple other, I believe there are other ways that he can bingo anyway. So um, he has other spots. Um, well, actually, he only has one other spot. Well, he has gratings as well into the G, but it looks like he's playing Gastrin anyway with Coving, so he must be sure of it. It's going to put him into the lead now. And this is as, so hard for Jared yeah. to challenge, too. Um, you know, you just can't let this go and then get hit for 40 again, especially not when you've drawn this rack. So we see a baby bingo come down. We'll see another baby bingo come down unless Jared challenges. Looks like we are on hold right now. Uh, David has not drawn his tiles. Jared has this sad look on his face like, oh boy, now I got to figure this out on stream. <laughs> um, but, you know, retina and a T, he's got a plethora of options that can play underneath Gastrin. I think even if you're unsure, you kind of just want to let this go, play your bingo. But there are two unseen blanks. If David picks one up after this, bingo's again, I'm in some trouble. Oh, my goodness. This is a hard challenge here for Jared. It's one you can't make, but most of those ING words do not take an S, especially in this lexicon. Yeah, exactly. And we're just seeing in the chat as well, the nine-letter word that's actually playable with Gastron is through the ER of Mule and... Uh, choicer making serrating so serrating and z's would have been kind of the 
uh, style points play uh, in this in this situation, which I'm sure would not have uh, resulted in any hold or challenge in this in this case. Um, but yeah, I mean, I mean, I, as a person that doesn't have, never really played NWL in a tournament, I've actually, I've actually only played in an NWL tournament back in 2005. But that was a long time ago now. What would what is your opinion of like just trying out words that you may not be hundred percent sure of, but you're like. I'm just going to put my opponent to the test now. Like, what? How would you uh, approach that? So I'll say that the best thing that ever happened to my Scrabble game was me fluking into 2000 because as soon as I did, everybody <laughs> thought that I knew what I was doing, and that had oh no, uh oh, this oh, is not no. a word. David's face says it all. Oh my god, not even good in comments either. <laughs> Wait, I think David's just uh, just pinching himself here. Is he just double checking that, and he's challenging it? Oh wow. man, there's five possible bingos. I mean, out of that rack, um, and almost all of them fit somewhere um, above or below Gastrin, and that one is not a playable uh, or an acceptable one. So it looks like Jared is actually going to lose a turn here. A uh, phony that's come on the board with Tainter, but it might. It really depends on what David's going to pick out the bag because he knows that uh, Jared is going to bingo the next turn anyway with something valid. But yeah, this is a, a surprising uh, phony here. Yeah, wow, well, this is very uncharacteristic of Jared. Um, you know, every, but every player I think has studied their retina bingos at one point or another, or their retained bingos, depending. Um, but it's so hard on these racks that have five, six, seven solutions to like get every single one right and know what's not in there. Uh, but that's a killer for Jared, man. And he's got to be feeling really down on himself. But Jared, you can't think like that. There are still two unseen blanks. You're going to bingo next turn and pull ahead. Uh, you have to shake it off psychologically and uh, and keep playing here. That was very surprising, though. Uh, Jared is a very good player, and that is a very uncharacteristic mistake from him. Yeah, I mean, I'm happened. figuring out. Yeah, so I, admit, I was wondering if maybe the, the fact that he held Covings kind of maybe um, – kind of stopped his concentration a little bit in terms of what he was he was about to do. Maybe he was wondering about Covings and was kind of like ooing and about it and then was like, okay, I'm going to play a word on the board now and then probably didn't really think too hard about what he was actually playing. So that could have been a little um, little thing that would have happened in his brain also, I think. Yeah, yeah, lots to think about. Oh, man, and this is a tough turn for David. You now have perfect knowledge of his rack. Bingos are going to play above the T and dirt and like iterant uh, or entreat. And then you've got the high ones down on the triple words. You want to make sure you take away the triple square. I think he's got the right idea. Play also here and uh, force Jared to, uh, to settle for a very sad, sad bingo of like attainer for 68. It's going to happen. You better make it hurt as little as possible. If I'm David, I also want to turn over su substantial tiles on this turn to go digging for one of those two blanks, as I know that they're both in the bag right now. Uh, but going back to the, the previous question about the challenge rule, yeah, the best thing that happened to my game was me hitting 2,000. I've always played a lot of phonies. I've never known what's good and what's not. But once I hit 2,000, people thought I did. And I could get away a couple of years. It was wonderful. <laughs> now people know I'm full of uh, excrement and uh, <laughs> they challenge me a lot. But hey, they also challenge me on my helps a lot Earn in this challenge rule instead of five points. Yeah, you really do have to be sure or very sure of what you're challenging because it's a huge penalty. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, uh, just personally, you and me are both going to be um, playing in a tournament in a few weeks from now, so it'd be the first time we would ever play. So it's good to know that you play a lot of phonies. <laughs> <laughs> hey, in Collins, I don't. In Collins, <laughs> well, first off, even when I try to play a phony, a lot of the time they end up being words on accident. And uh, no, I'm so scared because it's it's a nickel to challenge. Everything gets challenged. I like both challenge rules. They both certainly have their merit, but I'd say I'd be more inclined to focus my, my studies primarily on CSW if some CSW tournaments were played with double challenge. And I'd like to see uh, some NWL tournaments played with five point as well. I don't know why the challenge rule, you know, lines up with the dictionary a hundred percent. I think it'd be fun to see it both ways. Yeah, there should be, I feel like there should be more, um, more variation in terms of, uh, anyway, I think it adds a little bit 
something a little bit different to each tournament and to each uh, each game that you play. Because like even if you play five point penalties in in Collins, you also have um, ten point penalty challenge as well, and that's just mostly played in Nigeria. So there's also those kind of things where if you're not sure of two words, you can be giving away twenty points, which is almost um, almost as bad as a double challenge, uh, um, you know, double challenge game as well. So. Uh, but yeah, we've just seen um, Jared put down Reattain and then play Intreat instead. So what is the next play here? Um, David has an S and a blank. So can he make David that count? one bingo. One bingo. Oh, and it's a three L? Jared had played, yeah, from oh, the wow. L. Wow, wow, wow. That is very that. tough to spot. I would miss this almost certainly. I see Nosegay in the rack, and I'm looking for a spot, and then I just not think about anything else. Um, but, yeah, had Jared played Attainer or Reattain, either from the A and Dots or from the A and also, he would have blocked the bingo that David has, which is Long Ways, L-O-N-G-W-A-Y-S. You don't think to make that blank a W. That is very hard to spot. I'd be impressed if David's able to pull the trigger on this one. Yes, and long ways is actually a sticky ass, so you can't even have long way. It's actually long ways only. So wow. even if you're thinking about playing long ways, you're like, is long way a word? And then you're like, I don't think so. So it's probably not a word either. But there are a few words like that, like edgeways or things like that, um, have to have the sticky ass on there. So it's going to be added a, a bit more, even more uh, difficulty to playing something like long ways as well. And don't forget that on the scoreboard, he's actually still behind, despite all of this. Um, he can't afford to to phony also, so um, yeah, he can't he can't do that if if he's not sure. So yoga is a very good consolation prize. Yoga through the G and Gastrin, yeah. holding GNS blank in a pool that is half vowels. Um, I think there's nothing wrong with that play. You have to be almost a hundred percent certain on long ways to pull the trigger. It is a better play, but. Even if you're 90 or 95%, that play gets challenged almost any time Jared doesn't have a blank. And you've got to be very sure. I say play yoga here and uh, just just kind of coast on to a victory from there. There is an unseen blank, so you've got to be worried about Jared bingoing on you. But at this point, you just, you just grab your points, I think. Long ways if you know it, yoga if you don't, and we keep playing Scrabble. Yeah, I mean, uh, Jared just uh, obviously just bingo. So he has kind of seven random tiles out of the um, 26 that are still unseen right now. Um, another option also is to play Agony um, to the right of Obia. So putting the A out into the triple triple lane, but it scores, it scores a lot more. So it's 34. Well, actually, it doesn't score anymore. Actually, it scores less. It scores 34 points instead of 36 for Yoga. Um, that would be a pretty bold move if you want to play uh, something like that and open up the board completely to see if you can hit that bingo as soon as possible. This is also an educational turn, I feel. I think a lot of players in this situation play O-Y, like G-O and O-Y. Yeah. That's a good play. That's 29 points. And A-G-N-S blank is going to bingo damn near all the time. But so is G-N-S blank. You're giving up seven points to play O-Y oh. instead for a little bit of extra security. <laughs> this is a great call by David. And look, he's found the second blank. Oh my goodness, uh, that that might break your anagram or trying to find every <laughs> single bingo in A G I N S blank blank. God, what's the over under on that? One hundred ninety nine point five bingos in that rack. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Something like that. It's um, he kept um, N G S blank, and aside from the blank, the next best tile to pick out really would probably be the I, which he has also. So he's uh, now got eleven minutes to. Uh, to, to try and find every single bingo he can play and then pick the best one, which will take him probably 11 days to do. <laughs> All right, chat, no cheating. How many sevens are there in A-G-I-N-S blank blank? Ooh, We're playing The this. Price is Right. Oh, my goodness. Oh, no. Here we go. All right. Oh, no. Furio is he's not a word, playing. but I think David oh. would have let it stay on the board if, uh, <laughs> if he could find a triple-triple through it. Oh, no. We want to see the F in, in a triple-triple lane. <laughs> but yeah, Furio would have been a um, an interesting cool. spot for David. Would he, would he just uh, not challenge and uh, try to find something? He could play something like Staffing, I guess, <clears throat> which would have uh, pretty much killed the game off. 
But um, Fido has come down instead, and now David is now, um, I guess the cogs are turning now. Let's see what he can come up with. Yeah, this has taken a very interesting twist, as you know, we felt David was all but dead around that coving turn, and then he drops the bingo, big ball, big baller move, uh, putting the S behind coving, rattling Jared, getting in his head, getting the fight, couldn't even pull the trigger on attainer or reattain. He was so rattled from the sequence of events that happened, and all of a sudden, David both blanks on his rack. Uh, is, is almost certain to win this game. Yeah, yeah. I mean, as long as you find something that's uh, valid here um, and not play a phony, I think he's good. So something like orangish um, onto the O might be something good here. I wonder if there's any other better spots. Yeah, the highest scoring bingo is three more than orangish. Oh. Uh, the highest scoring bingos are 80. Hmm. Oh, he's is 77. Oh, okay. So he's actually looks like he's playing, uh, wanting to play through the W of Dorts and making this up. Okay. So it's really take your pick here in terms of what those blanks should be in that word. Yeah. Um, make them double Bs or double Ps or whatever yeah, you there want. We go. And it, at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter that much because all the uh, S's are already, uh, already on the board or, and all the blanks. So, um, there's not really going to be any hooks anyway. He just ended up just blocking everything in the bottom right corner and leaving Jared with the only place to bingo is through that F of Fido, which is obviously not going to happen uh, with what he has right now. Yeah, so I don't know what those blanks are going to be, but I also don't think it's going to matter. The big baller move is to, to write GG on a blank piece of paper <laughs> and just go up to your opponent because that's what we've just seen. GG and GG are acceptable. Swagging is good. So I don't know what those blanks are, but I'm sure we'll catch it. Jared has to be spinning right now. Uh, after yeah, he's, just he's looking at the camera. Oh, man, yeah. that is that is killer. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's not great to, to, to feel this way. And especially when he played the phony earlier on, that would have changed everything. He could have ended up being um, bingoing again or picking out one of those blanks. And this may not have ha even happened. So it's minor mistakes like that. I say minor mistakes. I guess playing the phony in that case was actually a pretty big mistake in the end. Um, but a slight um, slip, uh, slip up or any kind of lapse in concentration like that can 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 cost you dearly. And you can see right now that's what has happened. Yeah, man, this one's just really spun out of control for Jared. You got to feel for the guy, you know. And to do this on stream, it feels very bad. Uh, I'm, I'm getting word from our production team that our next round, we will go back to CSW. So if you tuned in or hopped over to watch CSW, don't go anywhere. We will have two more CSW games after this, um, as it looks like pink is coming down, keeping Jared on the scoreboard, at least reasonably close. Um, but we know a nice balanced rack from David is all but the end of this one. Uh, while we're here, if you're new to the channel, if you're coming over from MGI and the tournament going on in Africa right now, um, this is Let's Play Scrabble. Hit like on this channel. We've got NWL and CSW content coming out weekly on this channel. Uh, I don't get paid to say this. I say it because Josh is a good guy who puts out cool stuff and this is his channel. So like and subscribe. Hit that like button on this video to push us up YouTube's algorithm and have more random people stumble into Tournament Scrabble. And who knows, maybe one day we'll be playing them over a board. Let's yeah, play Scrabble.com is where you can find all this stuff and plenty, plenty more about competitive Scrabble. Yeah, so I'm just wondering what Dave is going to do now. I mean, the F floater is actually not that dangerous whatsoever, but just for the kind of peace of mind, he probably will want to try and take that out. Um, something like Reify, R-E-I-F-Y, um, which of course 38 points, puts him much further into the into the lead and also doesn't give any um, bingo lanes um, as well, which is obviously useful here. Um, but you, you, just, you just don't want your opponent opening up a bingo lane that you can't block on the left side of the board and having to sweat it out. So you just kind of want to take up space on this uh, on this side of the board and uh, just try and kill it off once and for all. As we can see, the remaining tiles in the bag as well. There's only uh, two tiles in the bag as well. So I guess in that case, it doesn't really matter. He just needs to take out that F, um, play Reify, something like that, and he'll uh, coast a victory, I think. 
And there's only one playable bingo unseen to David at this point in the game. So if he knows it, he just needs to block the one spot that this bingo plays, and this is his game. Uh, I will let you guys at home with that unseen pool figure out what it is, but I'll tell you the number. There is one. Yeah, just one eight-letter word on here. I mean, we already pointed out what the uh, what the flowing tile is, so and it is that same one. So that will give you a bit of a clue. But um, as I said, you just need to block that block that lane. Don't give anything back, and you win. That's what you have to do. And I think uh, you know the the ability of David to go through that W and just muck up the entire board with that yeah. bingo is the reason he's in this situation now. If he rushes and plays orangish. All of a sudden, he's also got to think about that floating A, that floating L, and also um, he's got to think about significantly more things. But because he was able to wield that very nice rack and just block everything up all at once with swagging or swabbing or whatever that is, um, he is in a comfortable position right now. Yeah, exactly. Definitely. Um, whatever that bingo is, um, just takes up real estate on the board and just destroys everything in the bottom right corner. Um, but David's just played Yum, which kind of does a similar thing, really. Um, doesn't give anything back and blocks off that uh, that floating F. So there's no real, um, there's no danger now, um, especially now that uh, David has six tiles on his rack now. There's no more tiles in the bag. But um, just to spoil the the, the, uh, the teaser that Matt um, just said, the only bingo through the F um, unseen to David at that point was unfeared. So that would have to have left the F and the V in the bag. But um, Jared is about to play Fakir. Excuse me? Sorry. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so so Fakir is going to put right. David up. Uh, uh, now David is up uh, 420 to 395 after that play. Excuse me. Yeah. Yeah. Play. yeah, so um, he has two outplays here with Love, L-U-V. I mean, this is talking about from Jared's point of view. He has L-U-V onto the Alibor also, and Vug onto the G of uh, whatever that bingo is. So if he can go play something that kind of disrupts both of those um, outplays, um, something long enough to onto the G or through the N or, the, or N or G of that bingo, or through the A of Intreat going down long enough, maybe a five-letter word or something, or through the L, also, then he will block everything. So that I don't know if that's something that he's uh, even on his radar right now, but um, he has enough time to kind of work it out with the with the unseen U and V. There's really not many options anyway, so definitely worth a look. It looks like he's yeah, looks like he's really good here. He's blocked bug and gov at the same time. Well, actually, oh wait, wait, he actually has a outplay with the A anyway, right? With also yeah, VAU. He could have blocked oh. all of them. There's four outs: VAU in two spots, Love and oh and right, Vaughan. yeah. But you know, he's found a cute play that scores a little bit yes. better. He's going to go ahead and make it, and mercifully let Jared go out in an end game that Jared rushed just a smidge. Right. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. So yeah, anything down from the A of Intreat would have been the way to block everything if you really wanted to, or if the spread really mattered. But at the end of the day, as long as you get over the line first, and he's smiling to himself there in his seat. So he knows he's there. done a good job here winning on stream as Jared is playing out with Val for six points. So that should be a final score of 444 and 411, 33 point difference. So well played, David Spargo.